Do you have powdered milk? Even 20 year old powdered milk? Let me tell you, in this video, we are going to show you if you've got powdered milk, water, and some kind of yogurt start, you can make your own homemade yogurt. And quite frankly, it's delicious. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Kaleen. I am thrilled to have Jennifer with us today. She's my dear friend, <laughs> and she teaches me a lot of great things, one of which was at a little group of women got together at her house a few weeks ago, and she taught us how to make um, yogurt using powdered milk. And she had created four different um, versions so that we could blind taste test it. And I was shocked because my favorite hands down was one of the ones that was made with powdered milk. So when we did this, I, I actually used whole milk and I used powdered milk. And this particular powdered milk that we used, it's non-fat dry milk and it happens to be 20 years old. And so it was really an experiment to see if, you know, that stuff that we keep down in our basements and never use to see if it's actually usable. Because nobody likes to drink powdered milk, at least I don't, maybe a few people do. So my whole goal was try to figure out what I could do with the stuff that I'm storing. So we used the powdered milk, whole milk. Um, we also used a Chobani start, which is my personal favorite. And we also used an eight month old freeze dried start. So when we did this, we had two quarts of powdered milk, one with the Chobani start, one with the freeze dried start. Then we had two quarts of whole milk, one with the Chobani start, one with the freeze dried start. Unfortunately, uh, when they came out of the incubator, the uh, freeze dried just didn't work. The start is just a little too old. We had done one with a three month old start that actually worked quite well. Eight months just didn't seem to be able to make it. But the ones, both the powdered and the whole milk with the Chobani worked amazing. And reconstituted freeze dried yogurt actually tastes delicious. It like does. When you just reconstitute it, it's, it's amazing. Um, so today, Jennifer is going to teach us how to make the milk and go through all the different, or how to make the yogurt and go through all those different steps. So let's get started and let's talk about the start. So let's talk about cultures for just a minute. So a culture is beneficial bacteria that are going to multiply in your milk and create the yogurt. There's multiple starts that you can use. We have here, these are just store-bought yogurts. They need to be plain yogurt, not flavored or sweetened, just plain, and they need to have active uh, bacteria in them. Some of these have just a couple, some of them have up to, I believe it was six different bacteria. That is important for them to be alive and active so that our, our uh, yogurt can culture. And all of these, it's different. Right? So the taste and the texture will vary depending upon which start you have. Now, I have a couple of starts that I just bought off the internet. Um, this one is the one that I used to make this. So this, I just use one of these little packets. It comes in little packets. I store it in the refrigerator. Um, and that's how I made this one. Now, when I was looking, I'm not saying this is the best at all. I'm saying I'm experimenting with these, yes. right? But when I ordered these, I didn't realize this one's supposed to make 40 gallons. I didn't realize it was all in one package. <laughs> but these are all in these nice little separate packages. And so I think if I were to do it again, I would order more of these. But I love the way that the yogurt tastes with this. Um, I like it more when it's made with Chobani. <laughs> that actually is my favorite. Um, and one of the other things is that we can use this yogurt start. I made it yesterday. So for about a week, mm -hmm. I can just take a start from this and make a new batch. All right, so to get started, there's a few things we're gonna need. One, we want a stainless steel pot. We want a glass mixing jar. We want a stainless steel whisk. You're also gonna want a thermometer. Of course, your start, your milk, and then you're gonna want a uh, some type of an incubator. I'm going to be using a thermos. Kylene's going to be using an instant pot. Not all instant pots have a yogurt setting, but mine does. And so I just do everything in here and close the lid and it's all happy. 
So our first step, we want to put our milk together. So if you are using regular store-bought whole milk, or even if you're using fresh cow's milk, you're just going to put your milk in and you want to start heating it up to 180 degrees because you want to kill off any bacteria that we don't want in our milk. So by getting it up to 180 degrees, it's going to kill those guys off. Um, the nice thing about using powdered milk, we can start that process by using really hot water and mixing it in with our powdered milk and so we don't have to wait quite as long to get up to that 180 degrees. So we're mixing our milk, we're getting it up to temperature to 180 degrees now. Just to clarify, we don't want to be putting our starts in yet because it will kill all of those little good bacteria that are going to set our yogurt up. Once we get it up to 180, we're going to let it cool down, we'll take it off heat, let it cool down to 115 degrees. Okay, and I just want to point out something here. She's on a stovetop. I'm in the Instant Pot on saute right now, right? On saute. I'm gonna get there a whole lot faster than she is. Yeah, but I use, well, you used hot water too. <laughs> yeah, she probably will. <laughs> oh well, so I don't have to sit here and whisk this the whole time. No, but we don't want it to scorch either. Right, so every once in a while, we're gonna take our handy dandy little thermometer and we're just gonna check and see where we're at. And I've oh, got a I'm long, there. Oh, what the heck? It's an Instant Pot, okay, what can so I say? It's gonna take me a little longer. She's already there, she's good to go. So mine just needs to cool. Now I could take this out and set it in a sink of ice water and that process would go by really, really quickly. If I just turn this off and let it do its thing, Last night I was watching a movie with John and it took an hour for it to cool down. It, it does. So if you don't have anything better to do, that's fine. But if you are in a hurry, go ahead and cool it yeah. off in some ice water in the sink. We hit our 180 degrees. We're going to take this off the heat. Let's move that off the heat as well. And now we're going to wait patiently for it to cool down to 150 to 115 degrees. Um, and then we will add our start. So I didn't wait patiently and I already put this in some cold water and it is almost, almost down there. So um, I'm gonna start mine sooner than she is. That's okay. Mine's gonna taste just as good. Mine's gonna taste better, I am sure. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that is really important to remember is that we don't put this in until it's the right temperature, right? It has to be, I and mean, you were talking about 110. I've also seen on one of my things, it said 108. So it's, I believe it's the University of Colorado that recommends 112 to 115 degrees. I, for, personally, I do 115 because I've got to add my start. I've got to get it into uh, my thermos, my incubator. And so I want to have a little bit of leeway. All right, we've hit our 115 degrees. So now it's time to do the magic. So I've got my little glass uh, measuring cup here. I'm gonna just take a little bit of this milk, heated milk, and I need two to three tablespoons of my start uh, for a quart of milk. So I didn't mention that before earlier. We're, I'm just doing a quart's worth of milk. I need two to three tablespoons, and it doesn't have to, this isn't rocket science, thank goodness. Uh, just two to three <laughs> tablespoons. We're gonna call that good. And then, oh, I still need that spoon. And then we're gonna gently incorporate that into this little bit of milk here. And while she does that, we have preheated this thermos that it's gonna be going into with hot water because we wanna make sure that the thermos is warmed yeah. so that it doesn't cool the yogurt when we put it in there. So I'll go dump this out. All right, and while she's dumping, I'm gonna dump as well. We're gonna mix this in with the rest of the milk. All right, that should be good. And then I'm gonna use this again. We're just gonna pour it into our thermos. And our thermos is our incubator. There are multiple ways you can incubate your milk. I know some people have used their oven and I can't tell you how to do that because I never have. Like Kylene's using the Instant Pot as an incubator. We also have this handy dandy little tool. So this is, um a cook and carry, it also goes under the brand name of Shuttle Chef, but there are a lot of different forms of it out there. It's a thermal cooker, and so what you do is you bring whatever you're cooking up to a boil in here, and then you tuck it away, and this acts like a thermos. Now, a lot of times when I'm using it, I will wrap it up with a small blanket or a towel to help improve that insulation, 
but that's a really good way to do it. And then this is another, okay, sometimes it's just fun to be a prepper and rub shoulders with some really cool people because we were able to um, buy some of these military surplus. And this um, is actually the way I do it all the time. Like I'll do it in, in quart jars and stack them in there, put in a warm towel and next morning I've got yogurt. Yeah, and I thought that was really smart. She warms up the towels in her dryer to make sure that they're nice and yeah. warm and then just tucks them away in this. But it's, it's the concept that's really important, right? You want to insulate it to retain that heat mm -hmm. so that the yogurt can continue to multiply and create all those lovely bacterias. Yes. So we're ready to go here. Actually, I'm gonna put this away with a warm towel around it uh, just to help it out a little bit and it'll just set on the counter for uh, about, I like to do it about eight to nine hours. You can go a little longer, you can go up to 12 hours. Just keep in mind, the longer you go, the more those bacteria are going to multiply. And uh, you're, so if you like tangy yogurt, it's better to go longer. If you like less tangy, you can go shorter, but no, no less than five hours. Okay, when I took it out of here this morning, when I took it out when I was making the jars that I have, there was a liquid on it, right? And I was a little bit worried that That's maybe I missed it That's the way. That's the way. The way, and it is actually nutritious, so you don't have to throw it out. You can either just mix it back in, you can give it to your cats, or you could, you know, mix it back in. That's probably better. Okay, so this is what I made this morning, and I didn't mix it back in, I just, left it, right? And it's, it's beautiful. There's something that happens in the cooling process that made it- Where it separates. Um, yeah, that made it kind of um, so that it was back together again. I guess now you can see there's a little bit on the top that I didn't see earlier. So maybe there's more in this one than there was in that other one. Anyway, but it's fantastic. Like you can take your powdered milk, your 20 year old powdered milk, and create yogurt. Yeah, it really truly is amazing. Um, just as a side note too, uh, you wanna be careful on how much start you put in. If you put in too much, then the bacteria don't have enough food to grow, they'll end up dying. So where I said it's not rocket science, it, it isn't. So you can, you can you know, not be exact on your measurements, but just I wouldn't dump in like a, a half a cup of start into a quart of my milk. So I am thrilled, right, that we can, we have the ability to do this. But for our question of the day today, I'd like to know what experience you have making yogurt and some of the different tips and tricks that you've learned, because obviously I'm a newbie at this, but I'd really like to get better at it. Um, and you know, you can buy little incubators, yogurt incubators that are just designed for that purpose. But like the way but that- But you don't have to. You don't have to. And the way no. that Jennifer showed us, we can do it in I mean, a grid down type situation, yeah. right? You could use some type of alternative heat to, to bring this up to a boil and then it doesn't take anything to be able to, to just let it incubate. Whereas with this, I'm gonna need power. So, you know, as, the more we know, the knowledge that we have gives us power and we're able to really look, look and say, okay, these are my limitations, but these are my assets and this is what I can do. So Jennifer, Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for teaching us. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Did we miss anything? Well, we should probably tell them if it turns out when you open it up in the morning, if it smells bad or if it's stringy, don't eat it. Give it to the cats <laughs> or put it down the drain. Because it should smell like yogurt. It should smell like yogurt, yes. All right. Hey, thank you for joining us. Jennifer, I really appreciate it. And thanks. It's been fun. For being part of the solution.